do I test my fertility is a question that was asked to me by someone who hasn't yet quite started trying to conceive and is going to and he wants to know what is it that he needs to do. Now, the majority of the patients that come to our practice, they have been trying to conceive for two years or more. They typically have had almost every test under the sun, and I say almost every test because many couples who come to us, we still find that their test results are, uh, you know, disappointing to say the least. You know, they haven't, there's so many things that haven't been tested. There's many things that have been left to chance. So whenever I see someone who either, you know, is just starting to try to conceive or is about to start to try and they're not sure if there's something that they should do, one of the things that I always recommend is get a proper semen analysis done. And by a proper semen analysis, I, I suggest that they get it done by a fertility lab as opposed to just going to a general kind of pathology lab because a fertility lab has different ways of assessing sperm that is much higher and advanced in quality than your average kind of general pathology lab around the corner. So going to, you need to get a referral typically from a GP and you can get a referral to a specific fertility lab and that way you will be able to actually have proper understanding of the sperm count, the concentration, the motility, which is how well they swim, the morphology, which is you know whether they basically are shaped abnormally or, or properly or however else. Um, then of course have an understanding about whether there is uh, too much DNA fragmentation or oxidative stress on the sperm, which will also decrease its quality, right? So those are very important things. You also want to check for things like sperm antibodies, because if you, you know, some men develop because of trauma or, you know, accidents or whatever, they may develop antibodies to their own sperm, which negatively impacts the chances of natural conception. And in some instances, men with uh, sperm antibodies do need to use washed sperm and, and, and conceive via IUI. Sometimes they may even need to have ICSI, which is intracytoplasmic sperm injection, which is essentially a form of IVF where they take one sperm and they put it into the egg. So there are many different things that need to be looked at, but that as a, as a kind of basic um, assessment or test is gonna be vital. I also, for our patients in the practice, whenever we are testing, we test the basic bloods as well. Most fertility doctors, they will just do a sperm and if the sperm is okay, they won't test anything else. However, sometimes you might test sperm and the sperm looks great, but a man is um, having some difficulties with their hormones or their testicles are going into premature fa or failure. And so you're not able to necessarily pick that out in sperm straight away. However, the blood test will tell us whether there is testicular failure that we need to be aware about. And that really does have an impact for future conception attempts. You know, you might be okay today, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be okay in five years from now or in 10 years from now. And some of the best way to actually figure that out is going to be by doing your hormones, your FSH, your LH, your testosterone, you know, looking at the different things that could be getting in the way there is going to be quite key as far as, far as um, te further testing for your bloods to be able to understand whether we should be looking at something else in the future or whether everything looks good in the blood and everything looks good in the actual semen analysis. Now, if the semen analysis is not okay, then of course, you know, by not okay, typically the most, the biggest things that happen um, are actually the morphology is low, which is the shape of the sperm is not where it needs to be, or the uh, swimming, the motility is, is uh, decreased and they're not swimming as well as they can be swimming. Now, to address that, nutrient supplementation is going to be key. Lifestyle factors, you know, eating well, sleeping well, avoiding coffee, avoiding uh, alcohol, definitely quitting smoking. Any of the things that are going to negatively impact health will negatively impact morphology and motility, as well as excessive heat. So, you know, if you wear tight underpants, boxer shorts are gonna be much better. Making sure that you're wearing cotton where, you know, there is kind of a little bit of air and, and the testicles are able to breathe is going to be a really good help, you know, along the way and of optimizing sperm. The other thing also that's going to be really key is looking at ways in which you can decrease heat 
to the testicles. So if you sit on a chair all day long, get up, walk around, that's going to reduce the amount of heat that's on the testicles. Definitely avoid heated car seats because heated car seats will negatively impact sperm, it will kill sperm, so concentration and count may also go down. Um, the other thing that you want to be avoiding is mobile, po mobile phones in pockets. Oh my goodness, how many times I have to tell men to get those mobile phones out of their pocket because there are many scientific research studies that show mobile phones in pockets directly negatively impacts fertility. So the, anything that's going to impact the health of the cells is going to have an impact on fertility. Also baths, saunas, um, spas, anything that again is that increased heat to the testicles. The testicles hang out of the body for a reason, right? So they hang out because they, they typically are about one degree Celsius lower in temperature than the rest of the body. So anything that's going to increase that proximity of the testicles to the body and or increase the heat of the testicles is going to damage a sperm in, in a very big way, right? So you want to be really looking at those things and avoiding it wherever possible. So th those are some tips to improve male fertility and, uh, and also to understand whether there is a need for further treatment. So I hope that helps and until next time, bye for now.